Hey guys, this is cool. Wow, that was fast from Garage Gym Reviews. And today we are gonna give you the best CrossFit barbells. And I brought on a friend, my shorter friend, Jacob Penner, who also likes barbells, to talk about barbells along with myself. Jacob, can you tell us about your involvement in CrossFit? I coached CrossFit for a couple years, but my specialty really is weightlifting. Long story short, I've had a barbell in my hand my entire life. and I know barbells. And so today we're gonna to tell you the best barbells for those of you that like to do multi-purpose CrossFit type training. Let's do it. Now, before you buy a barbell specific for CrossFit, you need to know like what are the specs that matter to those of you that are doing CrossFit. Jacob, what are some movements specific to CrossFit? Things like thrusters, yep. what else? We got clean and jerks, we got snatches, we got deadlifts. You know, you need something that you can do all of these with that isn't gonna to be too specialized for any particular movement. Exactly, so having a bar that's like super aggressive knurling is great for deadlifts or maybe great for like a max clean and jerk, but it's not gonna be very good if you're doing like high repetition stuff. So the bars we're recommending are with that in mind. Basically somebody that wants a barbell, if you don't do CrossFit, that's fine. It's just somebody that's doing a lot of variation in their training and want a single bar for that purpose. The barbell that we recommend for most people factoring all the things like warranty, cost, the variation on the specs, where it's made, everything like that is pretty obvious. The Rogo Ohio Bar. Whoa, 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 okay, this is a special edition Garage Gym Reviews Rogue Ohio Bar. I have many variations of the Ohio Bar, and there's quite a few reasons I like this, but one of the biggest reasons is its value. This is not, like if you look at barbells from years ago, they have kind of like come to this place where there isn't a ton of innovation happening in these. Like the Ohio Bar has kind of been the same barbell for probably eight years or so, but what makes it so good is that it doesn't need a lot of innovation. It's very high quality, high tensile strength at 190K tensile strength, which is basically what's gonna prevent the bar, the steel from bending permanently. It also has a great neural, so it's a nice medium neural. It's something that's not overly passive. It takes it takes chalk really well. It's not overly, overly aggressive, so you're gonna tear your hand. It has bushings in the sleeves. Oftentimes it has bronze, or sometimes, in this case, composite bushings. They work, they last really a long time, they spin so you have nice wrist turnover when you're in clean and jerk, which is basically preventing you from like snapping your wrist or something on those old lock nut bars that you see. Nice sleeves and a lifetime warranty. In addition to that, it's got dual neural marks. Any CrossFit bar really has dual neural marks because it's you can do it for powerlifting or Olympic weightlifting. And if you want a barbell that does everything, you wanna be able to like use it in both and that's what this is designed for. Now, this is the what they call the men's version. There really isn't barbell designed for men or women. It's just based upon the weight and the thickness of the shaft. Most CrossFit bars are gonna be at 28 and a half millimeters. And that's what this bar's at. A power bar is typically 29 millimeters. An Olympic weightlifting bar for men is 28 millimeters. So because this is a middle ground, a do it all, it's at 28 and a half. And so that's where this one sits. Now, if you're a woman or somebody that just has smaller hands or just wants a lighter bar, the women's version of this is the Bella bar, which sits at 15 kilograms and is significantly cheaper from this, but pretty much has all these specs wrapped up in a smaller package. Now, if you don't want the myriad of options, like Cerakote and all that, you don't care about where it's made necessarily, and you just want a cheaper price, Jacob, what would be a more budget-friendly option? So my favorite for the budget-friendly option is gonna be the Rep Saber Bar, all right? So this one's coming in at just 230 bucks shipped, all right, to your door. Very similar specs, we got the dual neural, except we do have bearings in here. That's gonna help it spin a little bit quicker, a little bit smoother. And the tensile strength is a little bit lower at 150K. Um, however, I can say personally, I've cleaned over 300 pounds on one. I've squatted over 400 on it. Didn't have a problem, didn't bend it whatsoever. And for the ladies, we've got the 15 kilo version as well. And that's just under 200 bucks shipped to your door. 
a rep saber bar is not at the quality of like an Ohio bar. It's not at the same level, but the reality is for most home gym owners, like many people are starting and they're just like, I just want a bar. The bars they've been using at a commercial gym typically just suck. They have no knurling. So anything is an upgrade above that. And for most people using a something like a Sabre bar, they probably wouldn't be able to tell much of a difference. Absolutely. I mean, I've used it right next to a Rogue weightlifting bar, right next to an Oleko. And you can tell it's not the same, but it's a great bar. Yeah. I, I'd, I'd still use it. Yeah, and it's the work that's gonna get you the strength, not so much the bar. All right, now if you still want like an American made bar, there is a company that I think gets kind of sad on a lot. We don't talk about them enough, I think, and that is American Barbell. This is the American Barbell training bar. The training bar, I've had this bar in my garage gym and have used it for probably around eight years, seven years, something like that, a long time. It's a great bar. It's very similar to the Rogue Ohio bar in its specs, in it made in the USA. It has extremely great quality. The difference between American Barbell and Rogue, in my opinion, in most instances in terms of bars, is American Barbell often has a little bit more passive neural. So their neural just in general, even their Olympic weightlifting bars, the neural is just like, it's kind of passive. Some people really like that. Personally, I do prefer a little bit more aggressive, and that's one reason I choose the Ohio. The other reason is, although this is a very good bar. I don't think American Barbell has the economies of scale of somebody like Rogue. And so the price on this is more expensive than the Ohio bar, even though I think the specs of the Ohio bar are better. That said, American Barbell is making incredible bars, like their Mammoth Power Bar, which is behind me, is an amazing bar. I got their Olympic weightlifting uh, stainless steel version bar. Again, incredible. So I like the training bar. I'd recommend the Ohio bar for most people, but if for some reason you don't want Rogue, this is the option I'd select. Now, Jacob does have another budget pick he'd yeah. give, one that he has a lot of experience with, especially at a CrossFit gym that he used to go to. Jacob, tell us about that one. Yeah, so this is our ultra budget pick, all right? This is the Synergy Regional Bar, okay? Um, now, I had a couple of these personally, which prompted me to recommend them when I was helping somebody build a CrossFit gym. They bought 10 of these. I couldn't say enough great things about them, but we got them in, and I wanna say it was all 10 of them when they first came in, they all bent on the first use. All 10? Right in the middle. Now, I wanna say Synergy was very good with their customer service. As soon as it bent, we sent them an email, they just sent us a brand new one, no questions asked. I think we had to send them a picture. The replacements, eventually, once we got them all sorted out, they were good, they didn't bend, but I will say the company did a good job of making things right. This is a bearing bar, so it's gonna move a little bit quicker. It's gonna spin in your hands pretty easily. My one complaint about it with the bearings though was it's almost too easy to spin. It's like, it's like turning a bike. I'll hold it overhead and I can almost feel it kind of shaking around in my hand. And that to me is a problem, um, especially if you are wanting to you know, work up to something heavy after your wad or anything like that. You know, you want that security and you don't want to feel like you're playing with a toy. Um, but other than that, I felt great with this bar. Knurling is about medium, all right? Never ripped my hands on one, but also it's never slipped out of me. And the, the price is like around 150 bucks, shipped to your door, super cheap. I do wish they would put bushings in these and the reason being like you said like if you use this on bench it just feels like a little bit unstable that said for the price this is 190k tensile strength steel they claim at that price with these features it's a pretty good deal it's hard to beat yeah it's hard totally. to beat for that and price. we have the games bar which is like their more expensive Cerakote version which you can bring out just to show it's Cerakote it, but it features pretty much all the same components that the regionals bar do the reason we recommend this one over this one is the Cerakote's okay i would actually guess that it's not Cerakote like Cerakote branded type and, of thing and the other thing to, to point out is it's Cerakoted or Duracoated, whatever you want yeah. to call it on the sleeve as well and we we have one of these in the gym and it looks really cool having that all black sleeve, but after, right when you get it. <laughs> after a week of sliding plates on and off, you get a nice brown and then slightly red rusted over sleeve. Um, so that does get worn off very easily. Totally, yeah, and it blunts the neural. Like the neural just isn't as sharp yeah. as it would be on Chrome. Definitely uh, sharper. Here. So I'd recommend the regionals over the games far. Okay, the next one is like, it's kind of a middle tier. So price-wise, 
This is above like the Synergy bar, and this is above the Rep bar, although in my opinion, I would probably recommend it above the Rep bar if you've got a little bit extra spend, and I'll tell you why. This is the French Sport Wonder Bar. This has been kind of my runner-up pick for most people. Wow, two? for quite some time. So the French Sport Wonder Bar is an imported bar by French Sport, but it does have a high tensile strength at over 200K tensile strength. It does have a lifetime warranty. So, and French Sport is known to back their warranties. It's not offering like crazy customization like we see with the Ohio bar, like Cerakotes and things like that. It's more like black zinc with black zinc sleeves. It looks pretty good. They do offer a bushing and a bearing option, but it is definitely a bar that I've recommended many times over the years. And I have yet to have somebody come back and say, man, I wish I wouldn't have got that bar. This is a nice in between where it's not quite as expensive as the Ohio bar, but it's from a company that's been around, services their bars, and it's really good quality. Now, if you're somebody who money is no object, so you're just like, I just want the best freaking barbell. I don't care about the cost. There are quite a few options for you. One is an Aleco XF, but the bar that I want to mention that I've found myself using probably more than just about any other bar in my garage gym, and that is because I'm lazy, is the Gungner All-Rounder. Now these are the Dumblers. The reason we are showing the Dumblers is because I have the All-Rounder in my garage and I will not let it go. Um, I absolutely love this bar. And it's not because it's just like, the greatest knurling in the world, it's because of one feature that is so kind, and I think would be very beneficial for many CrossFitters, and that is this built-in collar. If you've never seen this, be amazed because the collar is very sick. I've thrown this off the top of a 10-foot squat rack, standing all the way up, no issues. I've been using this thing a ton, both inside and outside, still performs like day one. I personally have no worries with this. I think they have a lifetime warranty on it too, so if it does break, they'll replace it. But one reason that I think this would be great is if you are doing like high repetition stuff like snatches and cleaning jerks, one of the annoying things is when the plates start shifting and moving off and you gotta adjust this, the, the collars. This is something where you just set it and you will not have to freaking worry about it, which is so nice. I'm gonna keep you honest too. Exactly, there is, yeah, for real. There is one problem with the bar is it's 28 millimeters, which is fine. Like CrossFitters can use 28 millimeters. Like I think it still works, but it does have a center neural. So it is passive, the center neural is, but I would like to basically use this platform to say, Gungner, you should come out with a CrossFit specific barbell. I know you got the all rounder, but come out with one that has no center neural. So no center neural, 28 and a half millimeters, but use this technology and man, that would be sick. Now these are expensive. I said this is a money no object type of purchase. Most of you would not want to swallow the amount that this is, which is around $650 with shipping. Oh man, that's a lot of money for a CrossFit barbell. Is it that much better than the Rogo Ohio bar? No, it's not. But this little thing, I just like, how many times did I click this in the video already? It is amazing. Okay, well, there's some barbell recommendations for you. This is from somebody who used a lot of barbells as has Jacob. So Jacob's also very strong. He is a coming up a, gonna be a level two USAW coach, which is epic and also is a CrossFit level one coach and coaches CrossFit. But this has been Coop from Garage Room Reviews. Jacob from Garage Room Reviews. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Peace.